practice. We're back on site today. As you can see around you, all the pink insulation has been applied to the foundation. That part is all done. We're waiting for the contractors to come back who are going to lay in the perimeter drainage pipe. Uh, and once they get that in, they're going to take photographs to give to the building inspector, and then they're going to backfill. Oftentimes, the building inspector would have to visually inspect that personally, but uh, you know, we've been doing good work. They've been seeing that you know the contractors know what they're doing. There's a degree of trust that we've built up instead of animosity. So they said, it's fine, just take some pictures before you fill it in. So the contractors can do the work, backfill it all in the same day, saves time, saves money. And that's all made possible by trust and mutual respect for each other. So that part's going pretty well. Uh, I, as you know, got a, the delivery of the pink foam just the other day. That was only half of the delivery. The other half of the delivery was supposed to be a bunch of wire lath, which is kind of like a, a metal mesh. That's going to go on the outside of the uh, pink foam that I'm going to put stucco on afterwards. Also a bunch of uh, concrete cinder blocks uh, were supposed to be part of that delivery. And those are going to be part of a, a subfloor air venting system to get some warm air underneath the, the slab. None of those things showed up. Uh, and as it turns out, it was because the truck that was supposed to bring that stuff uh, realized that our road is completely impassable and they couldn't come down that road. The same day that the, another truck from the same company, same kind of truck, 60 foot long flatbed with a forklift on the back they came down totally fine uh, so you know it's kind of the luck of the draw you know what quality of people that you get uh, I called in about that and they were supposed to show up today this morning that's one of the reasons we were planning on being here today but um, they the paperwork got screwed up so they stood us up again so this is the second time that we're getting stood up this is Home Depot by the way <laughs> um, so uh, you know and fortunately, that the stuff that didn't show up, I don't need it right away. So, I mean, it was the pink foam and the asphalt seal that I really wanted, and that stuff showed up, so I was really fortunate it worked out that way. But anyway, we wanted to come out here on site again anyhow because uh, I wanted to set up the outside air adapter for the wood stove. There's a stake right here that you might be able to see. Right here. And that is where we want the outside air to come up right behind the wood stove. The wood stove is going to be right proximal <laughs> to that area. And behind you, as you can see, there is a hole right here. This is an 8 inch uh, uh, in diameter hole. And what we want to do is bring a 4 inch pipe up through this area. And that will give 2 inches of insulation. Back up here. That'll give us 2 inches of insulation on either side. So we're going to be able to bring a 4 inch. Uh, pipe right over to the stick you hear you see down in the corner here from there it's going to branch at a 45 degree angle right over to here and, and again uh, it'll have that two inches of insulation because it'll be a four inch pipe running through an eight inch pipe and what I'm going to do is with the four inch pipe I'm going to put some foam fins on it to kind of space it off from the eight inch pipe slide that into the eight inch pipe the eight inch pipe is going to have a bunch of holes drilled in it actually the eight, eight inch pipe is the stuff on the back of my car over here that big teal colored stuff um, I'm going to drill a bunch of holes in it and then I'm just going to fill with spray foam in all the voids that you know the fins didn't take up. So I'm going to kind of be fabricating those back at the other place and then bring them here to assemble. So we came here to like get all these measurements, you know, stake that in and everything. And it's kind of important to get that measurement proper because you want that within really a couple of inches of where the wood stove is going to be. Because you don't want it under the wood stove, you want it right behind the wood stove, you don't want it under the wall that's next to the wood stove. It's going to be pretty accurate as to where that is. I hope that I, I did all my math right. I did it three times over, making sure that everything kind of lined up. It's 19 feet and 9 inches from the outside surface of this wall, and it is 10 feet and, I forget at this point, some odd inches, uh, 10 foot 6, actually, from the front surface of this wall. So I think I got it in the right place. I think I got this in the right place, but, uh, you know, we'll see when the whole house is up and, uh, you know, whether I did my math right on that, but I think so. Uh, so we're here doing that today. River's making some roads back here, and other than that, we're just waiting for the contractors to get back here, do the perimeter drain, and our delivery to show up. And really, as soon as the contractors put in the perimeter drain and backfill, I'm going to get lumber in here, and then we're going to start carpentry. Thanks for watching.